What's up, everybody? We are back. John Delarose here. Delarose.com. That's D-E-L-A-R-R-O-Z.com. Coming at you today with the 160-page reprint package from Steve Ditko. This is old Charlton stuff. I almost skipped picking this one up. So there's there's several Ditko packages. This is volume three uh, as it's labeled. And almost all of them are newer stories with his uh, more philosophical objectivist work that he was reprinting and doing, or not reprinting, but just doing with uh, Robin Snyder. But in this one, they actually just did reprints. And I think it's the only one labeled reprints. I think there's six of these packages in total, as I recall. Um, and this one, like I said, I, I was hesitant about it just because like I, I've got a bunch of Charlton reprints in different forms and color. And, you know, the printing quality on these is not the best. It's like barely above newsprint paper, which is which is uh, kind of on the irritating side because uh, I, I want some nice fancy hardcover collections like I always do, right? Um, but it starts out with an introduction about Joe Gill, who wrote most of the stories in this. And Steve Ditko really talks fondly about Joe Gill and his writing compared to a lot of people. Uh, Ditko is not very fond of a lot of writing <laughs> that he worked for. Uh, you can read some of his essays on that to learn more. But uh, Gill is somebody who he really likes and so works out pretty well. Now what's cool about this and then once I got into reading this I was much happier than when I was talking about the, the original reprints. These are all stories from the 70s and uh, Dick Hill came back to Charlton in the 70s after taking a break when he worked with Marvel Comics and DC Comics and it was his steady work through the 70s. Really didn't get that much attention compared to his like late 50s work or any of that. But part of that is because it's hard to reprint this stuff. I don't really know how the rights work on this because Charlton was bought and sold several times. So there's there's a lot of unreprinted work of Ditko's 70s shorts that he did for these uh, different magazines, the, the Many Ghosts of Dr. Drave, Graves and Ghostly uh, Haunts, Ghostly Tales um, through this time period. And because they're unreprinted, I guess that's probably why they get not as much attention. But uh, you can tell he's really at the top of his game art-wise here. Uh, you, you see this beautiful shading. This is, I think this is around the time he was working for, for the Creepy and Eerie stuff, which is which is uh, the Warren Publishing, which is his widely regarded maybe as his best work. But a bunch of different horror stories. Uh, look, at, look at the cool design. Look at the, the eyes and ears, just the, the creepy layouts that he does uh, to really give you that sense of... of Fear. <laughs> and uh, most of these stories have like a narrator, uh, like like uh, like this uh, fellow right here, and they kind of hang out in the middle of it and, and make little facial reactions while the, while the characters are doing their stories. It's kind of a silly device, but I, I also like it. It, it is a nice um, nice little uh, contrast to the way that things uh, are nowadays. I, I would say um, some absolutely beautiful art look at look at the uh look at the line work right here with the shading and the shadows to cause that little effect right there between light and dark awesome stuff that you only get with Ditko. beautiful and so i read these um and was absolutely thrilled by these uh some of the stories uh some of them are written by joe gill some aren't and so they're they're, they're a little bit all over the map in terms of like quality i would say of storytelling uh, but, you know, there's everything's always dynamic with the way that Ditko lays things out. Just look at, look at his use of, of just dark here. See that whole panel of just almost all black, which is like barely an eye. Um, that is a really cool uh, sort of reverse way of, of drawing that you, that you don't see very often. This would take a lot of time to do. Cool. Um couple of these are reprinted elsewhere as i recall there's uh there's this one where there's this guy who gets this statue of this ancient egyptian goddess who he's in love with and it turns out he gets the wrong one when he when he when he steals it from a museum and he ends up dead um that's reprinted in the uh yoey books art of ditko or creativity of ditko there's like i said a couple of those made it into other spots uh, but most of these I've not seen reprinted anywhere else. So these are, uh, it's really a treat to be able to read these extra short stories of Mr. Ditko. Very cool. 
They're not in any particular order from what I can tell. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why they were ordered this way. Because it's not chronological as, as they come out all over the map here. Maybe it is chronological in the, in the uh, 03456. I know that Charlton ordered a bunch of stories and then it wouldn't necessarily print them. No, this is B1495. So I, I, don't, I don't even know the numbering systems on these. But there doesn't appear to be a rhyme or reason for the way that these are ordered. Um, this is the gal who's the narrator uh, in this story. And uh, she's got such a cool design to her too. Uh, I really like, really like the way she looks. What character is that? I forget her name. Oh, well. Pretty character. So, very much uh, worth the while here of reading. And be a werewolf story at the end. Yeah, look at the, look at the little polka dots on this. Um, see, you just get some really nice anthology of horror stories through this that if you can find this at decent prices it's well worth the read there's a partner who betrays a partner and he sees this ghost and gets captured toward the end here i think the last story uh is let's see the last story is pretty neat um and there's this like cat who this guy adopts basically and she turns into a beautiful Woman, you're always told that Steve Ditko doesn't draw women very well, but, I mean, he does a pretty good dang job right here of drawing a pretty gal. Seductress, maybe. Um, but she uh, transports him to this other realm and, and sends him through time so he can see that he really doesn't want to live in other time periods. And then kind of brings him back, and we meet, her, meet a gal who looks just like her at the end, who uh, he happily ever after lives with. Most of these don't end happily ever after. Most of them are, like, kind of warning stories about being uh bad <laughs> but this one uh, the guy was just kind of down on his luck and uh and then uh and then gets a little happy ending so that's a that's a an, i guess a nice way to end the book from that perspective a little bit more about joe gill at the end because we get we get a you know he he had a very prolific um life also in terms of comic writing and, and really doesn't get as much attention as he deserves as a writer but very good stuff um this is 10 out of 10 peak peak maybe some of the best ditko work i've read i wish it came in a better package you know i mean you get the the, the stock here but uh the you know i want them in color honestly i know that the black and white highlights the light his uh his uh, work a little better i think a lot of these were actually in color originally and i know charlton wasn't known for having the best color but uh you know you get some good color restorations on this and i think it, it popped really nicely um, and I'd also like it on a, a little nicer paper than this old sort of newsprint. But beyond that, beyond the packaging and all that, you can't deny that the stories are just wonderful, wonderful works. So good stuff. High recommend if you can find it. We'll see you guys soon.